overflows. Yudhishthir asks Bhishma about the act of union between man and a woman. Who drives greater pleasure from an act of union with each other, man or a woman? There are nine doors in human body to enter and reach the inner core and also exist, exit. This allows one to enter within. Each door has a specific function. Eyes bring form, ears bring sound vibrations, through, through skin comes sensation. So also is the function of male and female reproductive organs. Love is the energy that flows within and creates a balance both within and without. Also, it manages a life of bliss or chaos afterwards. Love is Jugalbandi, a musical composition when two artists play their separate instruments to, play, to create a rhythm and harmony. Indeed, lover and beloved are entwined twins in one rhythm, waving of different waves to create a dance of silence. Like two musicians playing their separate musical instruments to create a musical repertoire. The, this entwine can be between lovers and beloved as love or between a vocalist and instrumentalist as a song. Although this tying together is an ancient Indian art form where two musicians with different instruments are styles perform together and create rhythm of harmony. Each movement of the body is like a stroke of brush on a canvas. Indeed, different color strokes on the canvas is entwining. This we call as painting. Sages have described this as union of male and female energies through the medium of color strokes on canvas. In deeper sense, this entwining together is the cosmos, life, living and everything. This is story that explains the question of Yudhishthir is mentioned by Bhishma to Yudhishthir in Dan Dharma Parv of Anushana Parv of Mahabharat, composed by Sage Veda Vyas. Yudhishthir inquired, O oh, it befits, O oh, grandsire, to tell me truly which of the two, man or a woman, drives greater pleasure from an act of union with each other. Kindly resolve my doubts in this respect. Bhishma responded, In this connection is cited this old narrative of the discourse, a dialogue between the king Bhangaswana and his queen Shakra as a precedent illustrating the question. Listen to this. It is known that women drives much greater pleasure than men under the circumstances you have asked. And this is not only true according to the Hindu mythology, but Greek mythology also draws the similar conclusion that women drives one nine-tenth part of the, the pleasure than a man who does only one tenth part through this act of union. In days of yore, there lived a king in of the name of Bhangaswana. He was ex exceedingly righteous and was known as a royal sage. He was, however, childless and therefore performed a sacrifice 
with the desire of obtaining a child the sacrifice which that mightly that mighty monarch performed was known as agnishtut in consequence of the fact that deity of fire is alone adored in that sacrifice this is this such things are always disliked by the king of the celestials indra yet it is sacrifice that is desired by men when the when for the purpose of obtaining a child they seek to cleanse themselves of their sins the the highly blessed chief of the celestials indra learning that the monarch was desirous of performing the fire yajna began from that moment to look for the wrong doings of that royal sage of well strained well restrained soul notwithstanding all his vigilance however indra failed to detect any lapses on the part of highly soul monarch some time later one day the king went on a hunting expedition saying unto himself this indeed is an opportunity indra stupefied or hypnotized the monarch the king proceeded alone on the horse confounded because of the <coughs> chief of the celestials having stupefied his senses afflicted with hunger and thirst the king's confusion was so great that he could not ascertain the points of the compass to know the direction indeed afflicted with thirst he began to wander here and there in search of water he then saw a lake that was exceedingly beautiful and was full of transparent water alighting from his steed and plunging into the lake he led the horse to drink as well tying the horse then whose thirst has been quenched to a tree the king plunged into the lake again for performing the ablution the ritualistic worship to his amazement he found that he was changed by virtue of the waters into a woman beholding himself that thus transformed in respect of sex itself the king became overpowered with shame with his senses and mind completely agitated he began to reflect with his whole heart in this strain alas how shall i ride my steed how shall i return to my capital in consequence of this sacrifice i have been blessed with hundred sons all endued with great might and all children of my own loins when i was male and thus transformed what shall i say unto them what shall i say unto my spouses my relatives and well-wishers and my subject of the city and the provinces rishi and rishis conversant say that um, the mindness and softness and ability to extreme agitations are attributes of women and that activity hardness manliness has disappeared for what reason has femininity come over me in consequence of this transformation of sex how shall i succeed in mounting my steed again having indulged the in these thoughts sad in these sad thoughts the monarch with great exertion mounted the steed and came back to his capital transformed though he had been into a woman his sons and his spouses the servants and the subject of the city and the provinces beholding then that extraordinary transformation 
began exceedingly amazed. Then that royal sage, that foremost of eloquent men addressing them all said, I had gone on a hunting expedition accompanied with a large force. Losing all knowledge of the points of the compass, I entered a thick and dense forest impelled by the fates. In that terrible forest, I became afflicted with thirst and lost my senses. I then beheld a beautiful lake abounding with every description possible, plunged plunging into that stream for performing ablutions, I was transformed into a woman. Summoning then his spouses and counselors and all his sons by their names that the best of the monarchs transformed into woman said unto them these words, Do you enjoy the kingdoms in happiness as regards myself, I shall return to the woods, you sons. Having said this, the children and the monarch proceeded. The, the monarch proceeded to the sons to the forest, and the arrived there. She began. She came upon a communion an ashram inhabited by an ascetic. By that ascetic, the transformed monarch lived there and gave birth to hundreds of sons when she was transformed as a woman. Taking all these children of hers, she repaired to where her former children were and addressing them, he said, You are the children of my loins while I was a man. These are the children brought forth by me in this state of transformation of sex. You sons, do you all enjoy my kingdom together like brothers born of the same parents? At this command, of their parents, all the brothers, uniting together, began to enjoy the kingdom as their joint property. Thus continues the narration of this important story in response to the question of Yudhishthir from the sage Bhishma, who has greater pleasure in the act of union between man and a woman. Enough for now.